Hi, I'm John DeVore. Welcome to the DeVore Fidelity YouTube channel. This is going to be another Anatomy of a Speaker video, and in this one I'm going to talk about crossover networks. In the previous video in this series, I talked about how cone woofers and dome tweeters work. In this one, I'm going to talk about how a crossover works and also what it does in a speaker. So in order to talk about that, let's talk about what's happening in a speaker. This is a pretty typical two-way speaker. It's called a two-way because it has one tweeter and it has one woofer. There are two active elements in this design. The tweeter is responsible for higher frequency material and the woofer is responsible for the lower frequency material coming through it. If we were to connect an amplifier just to this speaker with no crossover in it whatsoever, we would get music out of it, but it would be far from ideal. And that's because we would be getting frequencies out of a tweeter that it wasn't supposed to reproduce and the same out of the woofer. A crossover network essentially prevents that from happening. A crossover network will dictate where the tweeter and the woofer cross over to one another. It will dictate the frequency at which the high frequencies go to the tweeter and the low frequencies go to the woofer. How does it do this? We're going to be talking about what's called a passive crossover, which is the type of crossover that's found in the vast majority of speakers. And it is passive components built into a circuit that is generally housed within the speaker itself. That basic job is done with capacitors and inductors. The capacitor would be employed to create a high pass filter. A high pass filter is one that passes high frequency information, but starts to filter out low frequency information. And a low pass filter would use an inductor. So in the simplest possible passive two way, you would have a capacitor between the amplifier and the tweeter, and you would have an inductor between the amplifier and the woofer. In that simplest possible crossover, the amount of roll-off that you're getting on each of these drivers is very slight. A single capacitor in series with the tweeter, in series meaning in line between the positive input jack and the positive terminal on the tweeter, is only going to reduce the amount of low frequencies to that tweeter 6 dB per octave. And that means, let's say we have a hypothetical crossover frequency here of 3000 Hertz. That means we're asking the crossover to start filtering out low frequency information from the tweeter at 3000 Hertz. But at 6 dB per octave, you are only going to be 6 dB lower in output at 1500 Hertz. And you're only going to be 12 dB lower in output at 750 Hertz. So you're actually still asking the tweeter to reproduce quite a bit of mid-range information. One of the cool things about the way these filters work is that you can start to string together multiple filters. So if you put two of these first order slope filters together and get them to align properly, you can add up the slopes and you'll get a 12 dB per octave slope, which is gonna roll off the, the base frequency twice as fast as that first order slope. It's called the second order slope. And to do that, do you just join two capacitors together? Unfortunately, no. If I joined these two capacitors together, I would actually end up getting a single capacitor with a different value. So we can't actually do that. What we have to do is think about the low pass filter and its inductors and turn it upside down. We're gonna have our series capacitor, and then we're gonna add a parallel inductor. Parallel means the inductor is going to tie together that positive leg coming from the amplifier to ground in the circuit. And that is gonna add another order to the crossover slope. Because remember, the inductor passes low frequency. It makes a low pass filter. So what we're asking it to do here is we're asking the low frequency information to pass through this inductor, but it's gonna block the high frequency information because the high frequency information we want to still continue on to the tweeter. If we want a third order crossover, we then are able to add a capacitor. And if we want a fourth order, we add another inductor and so on and so on. The same thing happens essentially upside down for the low pass filter. If we want a steeper low pass filter, we are gonna add a capacitor in parallel 
to essentially siphon off high frequencies while allowing the low frequencies to get through to the woofer. When I first started building speakers in the 1980s, there, I did not have access to a computer. And we had to do all of the calculations for component values uh, with a pencil and paper. And it's not complicated really to do these calculations for a first order slope. The value of a first order capacitor is dictated by the frequency that you want the high pass to happen and the impedance of the driver that it's connecting to. It's a pretty simple calculation. As soon as you start adding orders to that, everything changes because the values of these still depend on the impedance of the circuit and the impedance of the circuit is varying as you line these components up in between the amplifier and the driver. And so very quickly the math gets more complicated and because all of the values are interdependent on one another, the tolerances of all these capacitors and inductors becomes much more critical. There's one more basic component in a classic passive crossover design, and that is the resistor. The resistor is used to lower the output of one of the drivers. In a two-way, that's gonna generally be the tweeter. And a resistor does its job by converting the voltage that would normally get to the tweeter into heat before it gets there. But we can't just put a series resistor in between the crossover network and the driver, because remember, we need to keep the impedance of the driver the same so that the crossover point of the network is the same. And so that requires us to make what's called an L-pad, where you have one series and one parallel resistor. And those combined will lower the amount of voltage getting to the driver while maintaining the same impedance that the whole circuit will see. Those are the fundamentals of how the crossovers work. There are a number of other complementary circuits, Zobel networks, uh, impedance correction networks, things like that. But those are the fundamental basics of what's happening in a crossover and how it happens. I know Lulu Bear wasn't in the picture, but she is actually just over here. Yeah, I don't know, she's not gonna come on the picture. But she was here uh, listening to everything and she will be doing fact checking later on. Uh, I hope that was clear, and thank you again for watching, and I hope to see you soon at the next video. Bye.